fishing is about the only aspect of life in the Gulf where you don't haggle. Long before the oil, this was a thriving trading post. Dows plied the seaways between here and Bombay, and merchants dealt in fish, cheese, fridge freezers, gold, hamsters, broccoli. Well, you've got the idea. But it wasn't until they found they were sitting on an ocean of oil that the serious money started to roll in. I'm talking about the sort of money you need to build up a collection of metal like this. All these cars, and dozens more besides, belong to Abu Dhabi's Rainbow Shake. He's such a good customer for Mercedes-Benz that when he got married and needed a fleet of S-classes, they stopped the production lines to paint and trim them, even the rifles in the boot. Pretty soon, though, he was bored by mainstream cars, and in 1986, he started to make his own. This was an early attempt, part Volkswagen Beetle, part lunar buggy, part magic carpet. It has no name, so I shall call it the Bird Puller. His latest project is to build a people carrier jet boat so he can get his family to his island in palatial, air-conditioned, citron-type splendor. But strangely, his all-time favorite vehicle is the 1950s Dodge Power Wagon. It holds a special place in his heart because it's synonymous, inseparable even, from the oil boom. Early oil prospectors relied on them when they were out in the desert with their divining twigs. And he's so grateful, he's built a monument in its honour. Large! <laughs> Isn't it? You know, I've been around the world five times to make this series. And what we have here, in the middle of the Arabian desert, is the most amazing, most sensational, most outlandish, and by far the largest car in the entire world. The wheels are from an oil rig transporter, the wipers from an ocean liner, and the headlights cost a thousand pounds each. Every detail is exactly 64 times bigger than the American original, a point that becomes blindingly obvious when you step inside. Of course, the big advantage of pickup trucks is they have tailgates, which can be opened. I think, no, I know that this is the best view I have ever had from the back of a pickup truck. It is very important indeed that I remember to get one of these when the point-to-point -point season comes round again. In between races, I could pop up to the master bedroom, which is where the cab should be. You know, this is impressive stuff, but it does have one more trick up its sleeve. Underneath, there's an engine, a steering wheel, and crucially, a driver's seat. Hey. 
I do not believe what I just saw. It moved! There are so many questions like how and why that I think it's time to meet the man who built it. The Rainbow Shake. We built all the pieces of this track, nearly 25 major pieces in Abu Dhabi and we take it by a truck to here and we assemble it in the desert because we can't assemble it in the city because it's uh, very wide, it's nearly eight meter wide. What sort of engine does it have on it? We have a small engine, it's not very big, but it's to move it only for a small distance. It is industrial engine, they call it GM, Detroit diesel six cylinder, but it's not very big. A truck engine? 300 horsepower. How much does it weigh? We don't uh, know exactly, but it's nearly 50 tons, maybe. 50 tons. Most of the time, the desert is indeed empty and quiet and peaceful. And the sheikh really can be left alone in his own little world.